Hey guys, welcome back. And today we're going to talk about a topic that I just love. I really like this kind of idea and topic because I've got a lot out of it through the years with my own playing. It's something I got from jazz music. This is called Enclosures. And before we get started, I'm going to direct you to a name, the guy by the name of Clifford Brown. He was a, a jazz trumpet player, and he was just an absolute master at this. So if you want to hear this on a recording, go listen to him. He's the guy to listen to. And that lick you just heard me do, that's something you probably heard maybe Joe Pass do if you're familiar with jazz guitar. He did that a lot. And even Django Reinhardt. So what is an enclosure? You can imagine the idea. It's enclosed, right? So hopefully we're getting you a, a hint here as to what this is. So here's a, uh, what an enclosure is, and it leads to a, a good bit of chromaticism if you like that sound or you want that more uh, chromatic kind of sound in your play. So I'll give you just a real simple example. We're going to start with a basic. So here's a G chord, right? And you've got a G note. So that's what is going to be called my target. I'm going to target that note. That's where my destination is, if you will. But if that's G, look at all the notes around it. Now, your fingers are only so big, so you know, you're going to be limited here. And also, the ears can only accept so much, you know, so far away. But basically, what we're going to do is, let's start with the easiest enclosure to understand. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a half step below the target note, and then a half step above the target note. And you can do this in one of two ways. You can start on the low note, and then go to the high note, and then you arrive here. So you get, so if I'm playing, and you can do that too. You can start on the high, go low, and then arrive at the destination. And there's so many different ways of doing this. Another guy who's playing I really love that does this, and he's just an incredible master at this, is Pat Metheny. And I didn't even notice this until I started studying his stuff. But um, you'll see him do multiple enclosures. But here's another one. Rather than just start a half step below, we could start a whole step below. And then a whole step above. So now watch this. You're going to start a, a whole step below and a whole step above. And then go to your G. So now you're enclosing the G by whole steps. Or you're enclosing the G by half steps. And once again, you can go in any order. You can go high, low, or got to have some more flexible fingers to do this. Um, and what I was telling you with Pat Metheny is sometimes he gets a little carried away with this, and he'll he'll go uh, enclosure crazy and do something like this. Now, what in the world did he do? He started off whole steps, half steps, and then the the chord tone. Or let's start from the high note. And once you get this, you can apply this to basically any chord tone um, on the, the, the uh, one here. But we could go up to the third. If we go up to the, the B or the third of G, now watch what I'm going to do. I can enclose it like this. And if I imply this on both chord tones, <laughs> but you get the idea there. Or if I want to go the whole step, and then to here I might go, you get a weird sound. And there's your whole steps. Um, or you can combine some of them. Um, if I'm over a G chord, it's, it's lasting a while. That one is a little trickier. So I went whole steps, half steps, chord tone, I let it sit there for a bit, and then I went high to low on my half steps, and then I targeted it. So I went. Let's do it in real time. Or uh, maybe different ones. You can come up with all sorts of ones. But um, it's a little bit more difficult than that if you really want you know, the exact sound that some people like Clifford Brown use. And this is where knowing uh, your scales comes in handy. So you know, some of those may sound a little strange to your ears at first. And, and I'll be honest with you, when I first heard Bebop and Charlie Parker or 
Uh, some of those guys, I just didn't really like it that much. Uh, it had to grow on me, so to speak. So it may have to grow on you, or you may never like it. I'm not here to tell you what your musical taste should be. Um, it just kind of expose you to certain techniques, and then you know you run with them and figure out what you can you can use in your own playing is really what the point of this um, channel is. But more importantly, here's the uh, the one that is used the most, and actually the one that I used in the beginning is a lot of times what will happen is if we're in G. Then the guy will say, let's say we're on a G major chord. Let's make it easy. So what is a, a step down in the scale? So this time we're going to take into consideration the scale, or this is what we call diatonic enclosure. So if we're on a G, the next step lower is going to be an F sharp. All right, now what is the next step higher on a G? It would be an A. So we're not going to just randomly go to whole steps and half steps. We're going to go to the diatonic notes. So now you can do this one. So it's almost like a mixture of the two that we just did. But this time we're really considering the scale. And your ear tends to like these better in the beginning because they sound like they're in the key or the scale. So we have F sharp, A to G. So I'm just enclosing the G with the notes around the scale. Now, what if we went to the B? So if we went to the B, the note below is going to be an A, and we're in luck, the note above is going to be the C. So now we get this. You get... So I might go... And then you can, you can mix and match. Once again, you can start high and go low. There. This is one that you hear Joe Pass and everybody do. Or they might, they like to put that chromatic one in there on the second one. So you can get all sorts of combinations of these. And depending on how many beats you have, you can do, that would be your D one, by the way. Uh, you're going to go to an E, to a C, and a D. So you have, and then you have all these. You can put them. And that's another thing, is it's not always this rhythm of da-da-da, da-da-da, da-da-da. You know, you can, you can be playing like an eighth note line and step into it from an eighth note line. Or, you know, the other thing too is they don't even have to be eighth notes. Uh, you know, you might... whole notes and things like that. Um, a good exercise, if you want an exercise, let's say to quote master these, is get to the point where you can enclose the one, the third, the fifth, to begin with, just to try it, nothing complicated. And then you can even get into like, let's say you had a G7. This would be more advanced, you know, maybe the next level, if you will. So then if you want a G7 chord, you can do the whole half step thing. And end up some weird sounds. Uh, you can also go in the diatonic series, which would be an E and a G. I like that, actually. And, you know, the, the rhythm is a whole nother ball game. Um, I won't get into all that today with the bebop and the jazz rhythms, but the idea here is that going beyond just running up and down your scales or just your arpeggios, what might be the next step for you? And you can gradually introduce some chromaticism into your playing with these enclosures and you just have to use your ear and your taste um, if I'm playing you know maybe nine pound hammer or something that's very simple harmonically I'm not going to put all this stuff in it would be very distasteful so you have to understand the context of the tune but you know if I'm playing something more um, maybe more modal like even like wheelhouse or something I can certainly I can put those things in there you know I'm come up with all sorts of outside sounds, if you will. Um, but these are enclosures. I'll probably do another video on these because it's a complicated topic, but I certainly urge you to check out Clifford Brown. Please go to my website. It's Jody Hughes Music. I would absolutely love to have you. Throw me a comment in there if you have any questions about this. I know we're getting some more difficult topics, so I expect there to be some uh, questions. You know, myself, it took me a while to learn this. I didn't get all this right off in the beginning. But also go check out Pat Metheny. I absolutely love Pat Metheny's playing. 
Um, and study it if you really like it. It's, it's, he's one of those guys that I don't feel like I got as much out of until I started just diving into his music. And man, he's great um, to check out for enclosures as well. But you guys take care and let me know if you have any questions. All right. Thank you.